So this webinar is going to be for around two hours, um, and it will feature uh, a number of um, presenters, and hopefully it would be an enjoyable, interesting uh, experience that you will get lots of um, ideas and information um, on our 100 online CELTA uh, offering. All right, everybody, uh, good afternoon again, uh, wherever you are. I hope um, that um, uh, you're all keeping safe and healthy in these uh, unprecedented circumstances. Um, my name is um, Professor Hisham Mosakbini, and I'm the um, head of um, assessment uh, in the region here in um, um, in the Middle East, Africa, uh, Central Asia, Russia, and um, Turkey. So um, uh, basically one of the main things that basically we've been trying to do over the past few one or a few weeks really is to respond um, you know, um, effectively to um, uh, the current crisis. It's indeed unprecedented times. Um, I don't think basically in our lifetimes we've witnessed something more uh, challenging uh, to education. So one of the uh, one of the responses that basically we had uh, was to modify our um, qualifications uh, to um, be as helpful and as responsive to the needs of the teachers. Um, and one of the main uh, products, of course, that we had um, that basically we wanted to um, uh, to focus on is um, CELTA. Um, CELTA is um, one of our um, uh, flagship products, really, in teaching qualifications. Um, it's very much well known to uh, being uh, part, your passport to um, teaching opportunities worldwide. Um, these living, um, you know, kind of um, um, unusual circumstances that basically we are in at the moment uh, makes it more um, necessary to, um, to find new ways of how we can deliver um these qualifications and these programs effectively in this presentation um uh, one of the main things that basically i'll be carrying out throughout this um uh, these um uh, these talks and uh, discussions at the end uh is um um is to uh, keep you engaged keep you um involved uh throughout and if you have questions uh please feel free to use the chat box uh please make sure that if you've got um, uh, an option to uh, to um, to um, turn your mic on. Please keep it muted um, throughout uh, the presentation. Uh, the chat box uh, is there for you to ask questions, and we will have around fifteen to twenty minutes at the end uh, where we basically answer most of these questions. Uh, for the certification, um, I think that's one of the most important and uh, frequent questions that we uh, hear. Um, there would be an email with a certificate to download. Um, um, you know, it will basically refer to the content of this webinar. Uh, recordings as well will be made available and they will be shared to you in a follow-up email uh, that, um, um, uh, that you will receive uh, when we finish this presentation. Um, before we move to um, the speakers and the talks, um, let me share with you the plan for the day. So. We have around two hours. In these two hours, um, we will um, go through uh, the main features uh, of CELTA, uh, the new online CELTA. Um, I'm really delighted um, and honored to uh, be joined by um, uh, colleagues and um, educators uh, from all over the world. Um, I've got um, Mr. Tim Banks with me. Um, who will be talking about um, CELTA in general. Um, and uh, I've got uh, Kate from, uh, uh, you know, from Kiev, from Ukraine, will be uh, sharing um, some insights of how online CELTA uh, works. We've got also a number of testimonies from um, uh, CELTA uh, uh, um, professionals, um, you know, uh, tutors, teachers, and directors that got involved with the delivery at one point. And then um, the interesting part would be really the, um, the interaction that we will get at the end. Uh, we will have um, a panel, um, and the panel will feature all the, um, uh, the speakers, um, and we will answer as many questions as possible. Um, this plan really 
promises to be um, a very uh, fruitful and a rich um, um, uh, conference, which I will hope uh, that you will definitely enjoy. Um, the first speaker of the day uh, is um, Tim Banks. Uh, Tim Banks is uh, the global manager uh, for teacher development at Cambridge Smith English. Um, he's uh, joining us today from Cambridge. Um, Tim uh, has been working in uh, the ELT industry for around 30 years. He started his career as a teacher, an academic manager, a trainer, and also as a content and material writer. Um, he's worked in Europe, Asia, and Africa, including spills in, with International House, the British Council. But since uh, 2013, he's been working at Cambridge English as the global manager for teacher development. So um, he's responsible now for the strategy and development for teaching qualifications, including CELTA, DELTA, TKT, CELT-B, and CELT-S. Um, I'm very delighted to have Tim with me uh, on the line, um, and I'll pass it over to him now. Tim, it's over to you. OK, thank you, Hisham. Um, I'm very pleased to be here. I'm here, as uh, Hisham says, I'm here in Cambridge, and I'm delighted to join everybody in the um, in this um, webinar and uh, to talk to you a bit about some of our teaching qualifications, specifically about uh, CELTA and also a little about the CELT-P and CELT-S qualifications later. So I hope you're all keeping well. Um, I will, as I say, I'll go on to talk a little bit about the background to our qualifications and then mainly about how CELTA works, what, uh, what it needs to, what kind of people take CELTA and the reasons why they do. Uh, and how particularly it's working at the moment in the um, current situation. Uh, and then I'll go on as well to talk a little bit about CELT-P and CELT-S, and uh, that will be a theme that continues throughout the, the webinar this morning, this afternoon, depending on where you are. So I shall um, turn off my video now and uh, go through some presentation. And please do ask any questions, and as Hisham says, we'll uh, address those towards the end of the webinar. So Cambridge English teaching covers a, a range of things. Uh, first of all, the qualifications, the uh, kind of things that we've just mentioned, CELTA, DELTA, TKT, CELT-P, CELT-S are all part of the qualifications. Development, which is mainly free materials and support that's available on our website, so things like the um, frameworks for teachers, for trainers, as well as various development materials and the courses that we offer as MOOCs. So things like, um, for example, we recently ran a very large course on the Teaching English Online MOOC. And then support, which is um, support for teachers who are preparing candidates for Cambridge English exams. So things like um, things like uh, lesson plans, um, the handbooks, the sample papers for teachers. So a whole range of things which are very useful, I hope, for uh, teachers everywhere. It's all really about giving teachers the confidence to go further, to develop their skills and deliver the best they can for their uh, learners. And why do we do all of this? because we believe strongly that better teaching leads to better outcomes for learners. So the learners will achieve more, they'll achieve higher levels of English if you um, improve the quality of the teaching. And building the skills and confidence that teachers need contributes to part of that. And of course, these qualifications particularly are recognised by thousands of employers around the world. Uh, and so that's a, another very good reason, as I'll mention later, why people choose to take Cambridge English qualifications. All of our qualifications and courses uh, relate to the Cambridge English teaching framework. What you can see on the slide here is the, um, is the summary level of the teaching framework, and this describes five areas of teaching skills and four stages of development. And it helps teachers and the schools that they work with to understand where they are in their development and how they can plan um, what they, they'd like to focus on in the next stages of their development. 
there's much more detailed information. You can find all of this on our website. But the qualifications are all mapped and related to the, um, the framework here. So now I'll go on to talk more specifically about um, CELTA and talk you through some of the basics and then we'll go on to uh, look at what's happening with CELTA at the moment. First of all, what is CELTA? So it's a course um, which develops the skills, the knowledge, the confidence and very much, very importantly, the hands-on experience to get you started teaching in the classroom. It's primarily for teaching older teenagers and adults, so young adults and adults, rather than for um, young learners. And it's very much based around this idea of developing your skills in a practical setting. So it's not just a theory, uh, a course about theory of teaching, it's very much about your practical skills in the classroom. Why do people choose to take CELTA? main reason for the various reasons why people choose to take CELTA. One of the main ones is because employers ask for CELTA. So recently we did a survey of uh, around 700 adverts for uh, in international websites advertising for teachers of English and across all of those um, 700 ads 70 percent approximately 70 percent specifically ask for CELTA by name. They may ask for, they may accept other qualifications, but they specifically name CELTA in their advertisements. In the United Kingdom, 90% of adverts for English teachers specifically ask for CELTA. And even within the UAE and Saudi Arabia, 72% of the adverts were asking for CELTA specifically. So that's very much one of the key reasons is that having CELTA helps people to get jobs in the English teaching industry. There are many other reasons, of course, why people may choose to take CELTA. It's just to improve the, their quality of teaching. So some teachers will be experienced already. Some will be new to the uh, profession. Those who are, have some experience, they perhaps haven't had the focus on their classroom skills in many countries. Teachers are prepared for um, to become teachers in their training colleges, their training courses, um, without necessarily getting much classroom experience. They may do a lot of theoretical uh, study and get a lot of knowledge about teaching, but not the practice of actually doing it. So that's where CELTA really helps to support them and to develop their, um, their skills. There are various ways in the standard model, there are various ways that CELTA can be taken. The most common still is a full-time face-to-face course taken over four or five weeks. So this is the classic way that people take CELTA, four or five weeks study in a location with a group of uh, trainees, usually 12 or 18 trainees, working together with two or three trainers, um, two or three more, in some cases, trainers supporting them and helping them. That's the, the very typical model of delivering a CELTA course. It can also be taken part-time face-to-face over a few months. So some courses may be over three months, some could be up to nine months, taken part-time in various patterns. Uh, and there's also a blended face-to-face -face and online course where the input, the training is delivered online uh, on a Moodle platform, um, but uh, can the trainers come to a center to do teaching practice and to get feedback from their trainers. So this is the standard model, and the course includes 120 hours, at least 120 hours of tutored, supported study, and a recommendation of 80 hours um, of supported self-study. So that's self-study outside of the classroom, which can include things like planning lessons, writing assignments, doing research, um, all of these things. So in total, it's around 200 hours. So as you can see, if you're doing that in four weeks, it's a fairly heavy commitment. That's not something that you can do intensively while you're doing other things. However, many of us are not so busy at the moment where we're locked in our houses, so have more time available to, to focus on these things. Broadly, what's it about then? It covers the principles of effective teaching and gives a range of practical teaching techniques. Crucially, it relates all of these to the hands-on teaching experience with real learners. So all 
um, courses involve the trainers, trainees working directly with real language learners right from the beginning, usually. So in most courses, in the first couple of days, trainees will get some experience working with um, real learners and then develop their confidence over the course. What we're particularly focusing on, on at the moment is courses which are delivered 100% online. And as Hisham mentioned right at the beginning, um, this is a response really to the situation around the coronavirus at the moment, where clearly it's almost impossible in most countries for any face-to-face um, -face courses to be delivered. And so we wanted to make sure that uh, the CELTA continued to be available to candidates during this time. And so we approved um, a couple of changes to the way that courses are normally delivered. And those changes mean that courses are now delivered temporarily during the, uh, the health crisis, are delivered 100% online. And that can be part-time or full-time courses. So the changes that we made were that we allow all training to be delivered online, on an online platform by the training centre, by authorised training centres, of course, still. And the teaching practice, rather than being with groups of students in a classroom face to face, can be conducted with groups of students in an online learning environment. So it's not one to one. It has to be with groups of learners still so that learners can work together, can interact with each other while the teacher is uh, supporting them. So the training can be delivered online by the same trainers who would normally so the verified trainers for CELTA courses by the same training centres that are authorised by Cambridge English. And the trainees observe experienced teachers delivering teaching online and they get their own practice, their own hands-on teaching practice in these online learning courses. The feedback we've had from courses that have been running like this uh, over the last few weeks, um, a month or so now since we um, we opened up this opportunity has been incredibly um, positive. So some people were a little hesitant, uh, some people, some of the trainers and the trainees were unfamiliar with teaching English online. They've very quickly become familiar and in the, um, the feedback generally has been that the skills that teachers develop teaching online are not that different from the skills they need in the face-to-face -face classroom. So they're still working on very similar things. The skills are broadly similar. Of course, there are differences. Uh, which the trainers can highlight um, in the support that they're delivering and the training that they're delivering. But the training, the, the feedback from trainers and from trainees has been incredibly positive, so it's working extremely well. Broadly, CELTA is uh, available internationally, so in more than 80 countries, um, you can take a CELTA course or there are authorised CELTA centres around 350 or so CELTA centres that are running courses and um, something like a thousand courses every year in the standard model. Of course, things have changed somewhat in uh, the last couple of months, but there are authorised centres available in most of the countries um, where you are. Who can take a CELTA course? So there are certain minimum requirements and these are the minimum requirements. You need to be 18 or over. You need to have a standard of education equivalent to that required for entry into higher education. So that would be the kind of qualification you would need to begin a course in a university uh, is the absolute minimum. And an English level of a high C1 or C2 level. So you need to be at a, a very high level of English proficiency. Um, some centres may have slightly stronger or stricter regulations than this, requirements than this that they impose, which is fine, but those are very much the minimum. The typical candidate would be a little older than that, so there are various groups of candidates who typically take CELTA. Some is people from um, who have recently completed university education, so people in their early to mid-twenties, for example. Uh, another group is teachers who have got experience teaching in schools and want to take CELSA to develop those skills further. They may be a bit older, more kind of 30 to 40 perhaps. And sometimes people who want to a change of career, so they're looking at a way of um, 
changing from from one job that they're doing to become a, a teacher of English and they may be of any age but could be older they could be approaching retirement age so it can be taken by people across a whole range of different uh, age groups and um, for various different times in their their career and development And as I mentioned, there are various formats, face-to-face, um, -face, blended, and currently online, which you can take, but the core of the course remains the same. So studying the principles of effective teaching, learning the practical skills, and getting hands-on teaching experience. So however you take your uh, CELTA course, you're still getting very much the same, um, same content. These are the five main topics that are covered in a CELTA course. So, as you can see, it's about understanding how people learn language, about how language works, and awareness of the, the languages. Teaching language skills, so the four skills of reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Clearly, this ties in very closely with Cambridge English qualifications as well, which will teach the four skills, and which will um, assess the four skills. Planning and resources for different teaching contexts, so different um, contexts where you may find yourself teaching later on, and developing those teaching skills and the professionalism to support them. How are you assessed if you're a, a trainee taking a CELTA course? So CELTA. Um, trainees are assessed throughout the course, so it's continuous assessment. There's no end of course um, exam, there's no written exam as such. It's uh, continuous assessment during the course, and it's based on your progress by the end of the course. So there are two core parts of the assessment. The first one is, um, and the biggest one, is assessment of your teaching practice. So you're observed by your trainer, teaching students, real students, as I said and you're graded on your performance over the course um, on that teaching practice. So it's very much an assessment of how you perform in the classroom, classroom skills. Alongside that, there are also four written assignments focusing again on particular areas of teaching. And you need to complete both of those. You need to pass both the teaching practice and the written assignments to pass the whole course. There are three passing grades, pass A, pass B, and just pass. And it is possible, of course, to fail the course. Where, um, the majority of candidates do are successful. So to summarize, CELTA is the gold standard teaching qualification. It's the one that employers ask for, and it can meet the needs of teachers in various different uh, parts of their career. It can be a new teacher with no experience or very little experience, a teacher who wants to develop their skills, particularly in communicative teaching. And perhaps they, they're used to teaching in a very teacher-centered way. They want to improve their more learner-centered communicative delivery of teaching, and CELTA can help them to do that, it can help people to change career moving into teaching. Um, and for people who need a recognised qualification so that they can apply for job opportunities. It's available internationally and it's recognised internationally. And um, currently for courses um, starting before the end of July 2020, as we've said, it can be taken in a fully online version. That is a temporary, uh, a temporary thing. Um, that date may be extended. It depends very much how the situation develops over the next month or so. OK, now I'll move on to talk uh, in rather less detail, but briefly about the CELT-P and CELT-S courses, Certificate in English Language Teaching Primary and Certificate in English Language Teaching Secondary. And these cover a very similar syllabus to CELTA, but in different ways and for a different audience, really. So whereas CELTA is mainly oriented at teaching young adults and uh, adults, uh, and you need a very high level of English proficiency to take a CELTA course, CELT-P and CELT-S um, are courses that we designed to be 
to meet the needs more of teachers working in state schools or compulsory education schools, state or private compulsory education. Um, one place where these have been used is a large project in Panama, working with the Ministry of Education on a project, a uh, bilingual education project there, where around 500 teachers a year from the Ministry of Education have been taking these courses. And they've had an extremely positive reaction to the course. They found it's helped them enormously with their, um, with their teaching, developing, again, those communicative, communicative language courses, giving them more choice um, of how to teach options for how to teach their learners and the feedback from the learners has been very positive as well. <clears throat> so the CELT P and CELT S courses um, combine three main elements really. They combine an online self-study course, so this is a course which is taken on um, a Moodle platform uh, completely self-study, which is around 90 hours of self-study, combined with face-to-face -face training sessions delivered by local trainers, uh, and there are around 25 hours of face-to-face -face sessions that revise and extend and practice what's learnt in the online course, and then assessment. So the course is divided into, a, both the CELT-P and CELT-S courses are divided into modules, and at the end of each module, the trainee um, try something out that they've learnt about in that uh, module. They may go away and uh, prepare some material, try something out in a lesson, and then they write a short report on that, and that's the assessed task that's assessed by their local trainer. They also do teaching practice during the course. So during the course, they'll teach usually on three occasions and be um, watched and given feedback by their trainer. The first two of those are just for development. So the trainer will give them advice and tips and feedback on their teaching. And the last one is an assessment. And the trainees will also take a module of the teaching knowledge test. So they take one module of the teaching knowledge test. And the three of those things together come together to form the, uh, the CELT-P or CELT-S qualification. What are the benefits of the, taking these courses? They're very much about developing practical classroom skills, uh, similar to CELTA in that way. They're largely delivered online with some face-to-face -face support, uh, so they can be delivered to larger numbers of teachers. So in, as I mentioned, in the case like uh, Panama, where they're bidding, being taken by 500 teachers over each year. They're using local trainers skills, so that we have a course as well to help develop, develop the skills of local trainers to support people taking these courses. They're accessible, so the trainees don't need to have such a high level of proficiency to be able to take CELT-P and CELT-S. Whereas for CELTA, um, trainees need to be near native speaker level, really a high C1 to C2 level. For these courses, the minimum level is B1, so it's much more accessible teachers and they're very flexible in terms of schedules usually taken part-time rather than um, full-time uh, often over the course of a school year <clears throat> so they offer a complete development package with around 120 hours of online input and assessed tasks combined with face-to-face -face training and as I mentioned, there are three aspects of assessment, portfolio tasks at the end of each module, a written assessment, so a standardized assessment using the teaching knowledge test, and observed teaching practice with two developmental and one final assessed observation. And again, there are three grades, pass with merit, pass, and it is possible to fail, although that's uh, very uncommon with these courses because they're much more about developing skills rather than assessing people's skills. So generally people who complete all of the course, complete all of the assessment and show that they've improved their skills during the course um, will pass. So these are very much more directed at teachers um, working in compulsory education and usually, not always, but very often paid for by their schools to take the, uh, the courses. Okay, 
So thank you, and um, please do continue. I can see some um, questions coming in already in the chat box. Please continue to add those, and uh, I'll come back to talk about questions um, towards the end of the webinar. But for now, I'll hand back to Hisham. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Tim. That was very insightful. Uh, plenty, plenty of information, and also plenty of uh, questions. Uh, thanks for that. Um, as we discussed at the beginning, so I'll leave all the questions uh, till the end. Um, where we will go through them all together. Uh, now it's time really to uh, move on to part two of this presentation. Uh, I'm very delighted really and honored to have Katrina um, Protisenko uh, with us. And I'm sorry if I pronounced the name wrong, um, Kate. <laughs> hey, no, that's okay. Um, so uh, Kate um, plays a major role in Ukraine. She's a director of um, teacher training at Great Education Center in Kiev. Uh, she's an experienced English language teacher, an academic manager, and Cambridge examiner, uh, in, as well as being a teacher trainer. Kate has intensive experience, particularly in running Cambridge CELT-P, CELT-S, CELT-A, and um, sorry, CELTA and Delta courses in Ukraine, Turkey, Lebanon, Thailand, Azerbaijan, the UK, and Greece. Um, Kate also presented at a major AIT conference in Ukraine, UK, um, Spain, and Poland. And she's got various interests in um, psychology, learning, mentoring, coaching, and other aspects involved in learning effective. I'm sure we will have plenty to discuss, Kate, after you finish your presentation. I look forward to uh, the questions part event. Uh, now it's over to you um, in Kiev. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, just wanted to make sure that you can hear me and um, everything is okay. If you can hear me, can you please send yes into the chat? And I will move on from there. Um, yes, excellent. Great, thank you. Um, so the um, fully online CELTA, which is a unique opportunity now. Um, what is it? Um, and where did it come from and how, how does it work? Um, so um, Tim has already spoken um, about what CELTA is um, and um, the fact that it's available um, in a lot of centers in the world and a lot of employers ask for CELTA um, as an entry requirement um, for their language schools. And, and so um, the, in, in the past, um, there were three um, models available. Um, so the most common um, full-time face-to-face uh, course, um, normally run over four weeks or sometimes over five weeks, just to give a little bit of um, time off um, in between the teaching practice. Um, there's also part-time uh, courses available, also run face-to-face um, -face, um, over a few months, um, possibly over eight weeks, 13 weeks, or even longer than that. Um, and also, um, we have the uh, part-time blend of the face-to-face -face and online. Uh, we call it, in the past, we used to call it um, online CELTA, uh, though now we call it blended CELTA. Um, and um, so um, in, in, in this type of the course, um, candidates normally um, study all of the input um, online uh, and then do all of the teaching practice um, at the center where they are taking um, their CELTA. Um, and the teaching practice um, could be scheduled um, over a couple of weeks at the beginning of the course, at the end of the course, or throughout the course, so there's different models available. Um, but with the um, current situation in the world, um, we've had to adapt things. Um, so um, here in Kiev, for example, we were um, right in the middle of a part-time course uh, when um, we had to um, we uh, we had to stop running the course and, and um, wait for um, some updates and, and see what we can do, whether we can run it online or whether we can do it face to face. Um, and so um, with the current situation in the world, uh, there's this unique opportunity for a very short, very limited period of time um, to take the CELTA um, fully online. And, and so um, what does that uh, mean? Um, like I mentioned, um, on the blended CELTA, 
uh, candidates normally study all of the input um, online um, using a special platform designed by Cambridge where uh, there are videos, little tests, little tasks, um, and also candidates have to do uh, forum tasks where they interact with each other um, and um, uh, post things. Um, so on the uh, current fully online courses, uh, there are two options for the input. Um, so input can be done using the Cambridge platform uh, or um, can be done using the center's input. Um, for instance, what we did uh, here is we, we, we moved all of our input online and obviously using um, Zoom, the most common platform. Um, so we basically took our 18 candidates and, and moved them into Zoom and, and did all of the input online. Um, so the full-time online, fully online course, um, which um, can be done over four or five weeks, um, is basically uh, the same as the full-time face-to-face CELTA um, done um, using, um, using Zoom or a similar platform. Um, and um, a lot of questions pop up, um, such as um, what are the criteria for teaching? Because as part of CELTA, um, you are observed, the candidates are observed uh, when they are teaching. And there are criteria such as uh, monitoring, where we want to make sure that the teachers are looking into uh, the students' papers and are actually noticing what's happening there. And, and so uh, all of the same criteria apply. Um, and um, the, the beauty of the online course is that um, we get a chance to uh, see how it, how it works online and also discuss how it could work um, in the face-to-face -face model. Um, so um, a typical sell, a typical CELTA course, um, what does it look like? And what does uh, a fully online CELTA course look like? Um, so normally um, on the course, um, there, there's um, 12 candidates um, working with two tutors. That's the most standard model, um, which means that um, candidates break down into smaller groups and six candidates are working with one tutor for the teaching practice, feedback and assisted lesson planning. And, and then they switch um, halfway through and work work with a different tutor. Um, so um, on a, on a uh, typical small CELTA course of 12 candidates, each of the candidates gets a chance to work with uh, two tutors for teaching practice um, and for uh, feedback and assisted lesson planning. And, and basically everyone um, during input. Uh, there are bigger courses um, as well. Um, the maximum number on one course would be 24 candidates, and this would involve a minimum of four tutors, um, which is a very common question. A lot of the candidates ask, uh, will I get enough attention from my tutor and will I be able to interact with my tutor? And the answer is definitely yes, because the groups are smaller and, and the tutors um, aim to give as much attention to their candidates as uh, it's possible. Um, and so um, a typical cell today, what does it look like? Obviously, there are lots of uh, possible timetables, um, uh, including the timetables for the course and for the day. Um, I'll, I'll just mention one uh, and, and um, talk about how a typical day is organized uh, on a full time face to face CELTA and how that uh, applies to the full time online CELTA. Um, so um, imagine a typical Wednesday where candidates come into the center um, for around nine o'clock and have consultations with the tutors where they can discuss any questions they have or submit their paperwork, such as lesson plans, written assignments, or anything like that. Um, and then there's this half an hour for that. And then from 9.30 till 12, there's this teaching practice slot, which uh, is, um, personally i think the most one of the most important parts of the celta uh, and so then um after a uh, lunch break because we all need lunch obviously um the candidates get together with the tutors um, and discuss uh, what worked in the teaching practice what didn't work and and how things can be improved um, and after that there would be assisted lesson planning in which uh, the candidates are given uh, support for um, the teaching practice they have uh, on the following days and one common question I get from a lot of candidates is uh, can I teach anything I like so if the course starts on Monday will I be teaching on Monday and 
can I teach anything? Um, and the answer is no. Um, <laughs> normally, uh, we, we, we give our candidates some information about what they will be teaching and, and how to do that. And the amount of support gradually decreases, of course, because at the beginning of the course, we give more support and towards the end of course, we expect the candidates to know more. And so assisted lesson planning basically turns into independent lesson planning. Uh, but the tutors are always available um, for help and especially uh, in the current situation with the online um, environment, um, tutors uh, will be there and um, help as much as possible. And, and so um, in the afternoon, um, there are two um, input sessions in which um, the candidates get some practical, theoretical and practical information um, about how the teaching should be done. Um, this can include um, an input session on how to teach lexis, how to analyze the language, how to teach receptive productive skills, motivation, how to use drama, songs, games, lots and lots of different um, topics to be covered. Um, and, and those input sessions are very, very practical. So when the candidates uh, get some information about um, how to teach Lexus, they get a chance to practice this immediately. And so that the next day they go into uh, their classroom and they have already tried doing that. Um, and um, um, a typical day um, with a timetable like this would finish at six o'clock. And then from six o'clock onwards, um, we uh, normally say that uh, there should be nothing else planned and, and the candidates should dedicate all of their time to CELTA uh, because um, there will always be homework um, and that can include um, planning the lesson um, for um, the teaching practices, teaching practice slots um, on the days that follow. This could be doing some recommended reading, um, writing up written assignments, correcting um, their written assignments and so on and so forth. Um, there's lots and lots of things to do on a CELTA course. And so um, we say that this is a totally antisocial month in which candidates should dedicate all of their time to this course um, only. Uh, luckily, a full time CELTA course only lasts for four or five weeks, so it's not forever. So uh, that's what a typical day uh, would look like on a, a full time face to face CELTA, and which is um, about the same um as a typical CELTA day uh, on the um online fully online um full-time course so um if, if we take a fully online um full-time CELTA course um it would last for four weeks and candidates would be taking classes from monday to friday um and and every day would be about the same and would follow this um, timetable. Um, and, and I just wanted to say uh, a couple of things about uh, those particular slots, uh, including teaching practice, feedback and assisted lesson planning, because of course there are some dif differences between um, how this is done on a face-to-face uh, -face CELTA and on an online CELTA. So um, the teaching practice slot, um, would look um, like this. Again, uh, there are different options available um, and this is just an example of uh, how this can be organized. So um, say there are six candidates in the TP group working with one tutor. Uh, so in the morning around 9.20, uh, we all get together in the Zoom room um, and the person teaching first uh, would be getting ready for their teaching. Uh, this can include sending the materials to the students or uploading them onto Google Drive uh, or um, sometimes I know that some candidates want to create a WhatsApp or a Viber group with their candidates, uh, um, yeah, with their students and share the materials there. Um, so um, at the moment there's those different options available. And so from 9.30 till 10.15 there's a teaching practice slot for the first candidate, which is in my, in my picture, that's the first uh, person, Anna. And while this person is teaching for 45 minutes, the other five uh, candidates in this teaching practice group would be observing and making notes on what worked, what didn't work, and how things can be improved. Maybe some questions um, they might want to ask um and any other things and the tutor is also there in the same zoom room uh, also observing the lesson making notes um, on what's happening in the classroom and and so then um after um 
after this teaching practice slot, there would be a brief 10 minute break so that the second person teaching uh, would be able to prepare, get the room uh, ready, set up things and send the materials. Um, so uh, while this second person is teaching, and in my picture that's Lucy, um, the other five would be observing. So we expect all our candidates uh, to be there in the classroom when teaching practice is happening and either teaching or observing or uh, possibly writing self-evaluation. Um, that is uh, actually explaining what, how they think their own teaching worked. Um, and so the third teaching practice slot after another 10 minute break, uh, when the third person is teaching uh, and the other people are observing. And, and that's pretty much how things work um, every day. So three people teaching on one day um, and, and everyone observing while one person is teaching. Um, and if, if you think about it, the minimum requirement for um, the number of students um, um, in the teaching practice would be five. Uh, but normally we expect um, to have about eight people in a TP group, uh, in, in the uh, group. So um, imagine a classroom where there would be eight students um, and there would be this one candidate teaching. So that's already nine uh, plus five people observing plus five other candidates observing and plus the tutor observing and so that that sounds like um, a lot of people in one classroom and and which it is um, so um, we have to um, we've had to adapt things and be very very careful you know about muting ourselves um, keeping the camera off and actually making notes and focusing on the things so that we're not uh, distracting the person who is teaching because there's already uh, enough stress for them. Um, and so um, in, in, in this teaching practice, um, there's a lot happening and, and um, hopefully all of the observers making notes um, and we'll be able to discuss those things later. Um, and when, when I speak to potential candidates for the CELTA course and they say, oh, we are very, very interested in doing the uh, fully online CELTA, but we have some reservations. Um, um, things like, what if my technology fails and what if I don't know how to use Zoom and, and things like that. And so um, centers have been very, very efficient and have adapted to the current situation. Um, and, and some things we do, uh, some things centers do, to help the candidates uh, do um, um, the fully online uh, CELTA uh, successfully is, for instance, providing candidates with some training on how to use Zoom. So like before the course starts, um, centers will send written instructions on how to use the online platform and will probably set up um, many individual trainings with the uh, CELTA candidates so that, you know, um, we at least show how to. Um, how to uh, navigate the room and how to use the whiteboard, how to put the candidates, uh, how to put the students um, into pairs um, and monitor. Um, centers will also instruct the TP students on how to work with Zoom. Uh, because um, in, in a lot of cases, we get the students who come in and they don't know how to how to use this platform. And, and I'm sure a lot of us have experienced this um, when uh, the lockdown started, we had to uh, move all of the school's operation online. And um, we definitely had to work with the teachers and show them how to operate Zoom, but also train the students to do that so that they feel comfortable and, and they know uh, what to expect and what they can and cannot do in this platform. Um, also, on the fully online CELTA course, uh, before the candidates start their teaching practice, the centres are obliged, they, they, they have to provide a, the candidates with an unassessed teaching slot in which the candidates would try out different tools and techniques and, and see how to use the online platform and get some feedback from the trainer because the trainer is also there, the trainer is observing this lesson, uh, but not giving um, the actual grade, but making suggestions and recommendations. And this is also when a trainer can step in and show how to do different things in, in uh, a softer and unobtrusive um, way. 
Um, also, um, centres provide some centres provide the candidates with a recording of a lesson in which the candidates see how the teachers actually do that. Um, so, for instance, at our school, um, when the lockdown started, we had to we wanted to record a couple of lessons so that we can share them with the teachers and the teachers can learn from each other and see how things are done. And, and also so that we can show the students how uh, learning happens uh, in the online environment uh, in case they have any questions. And so uh, those recordings are things which um, centres can also use um, um, to give uh, candidates some a, a chance to see how things are done even before they start uh, the course. Uh, um, Centres will also provide the candidates with an opportunity to see an online lesson taught by the tutor. Uh, we call it a demo lesson, which normally happens on a full-time face-to-face um, course as well. Um, and when, when um, there will be a lot of opportunities to see uh, the tutors. Um, so first of all, in the demo lesson, but also because all of the input is happening online. This is when the tutors demonstrate how things should be done. And a lot of the candidates pick up different techniques um, and, and um, funny things from, from their tutors. Um, and also centres will step in if candidates have a technical problem during the TP. Um, and, and this is a very, very important thing which uh, we take into account when planning a course uh, because there might be problems with technology um, and um, because we, we are limited uh, in terms of time, um, we have to be very careful with planning. So centres will be available for help and, and will step in if there is a problem during the TP. Uh, and it, it is very important to communicate uh, with the centres um, if something happens. Um, so that's that's the teaching practice but what's the point of the teaching practice if there is no feedback and the candidates never uh, uh, never never discuss um how things worked in in this lesson um so that all that happens during feedback which is when the candidates uh, get together with the uh, so the six candidates gets get together with their tutor and discuss what they uh, have seen in the current teaching practice and and on a fully online CELTA course that would be um, happening in the same online environment um, so for us for instance that would be zoom and I'm sure a lot of centers are using the same platform um, and so this is when um, we all speak about how things worked or didn't work but also this is a chance for the tutors to do some micro teaching and little demonstrations of how things can be done uh, differently and, and um, how things should be done uh, probably. Um, so um, in, in, in this feedback on the teaching practice, um, uh, we work in, in those smaller groups and we talk about what we've seen um, and what we've heard um, and, and we show as tutors, we actually show the candidates how things can be uh, done differently. Um, at the end of this uh, session, uh, all of the candidates taught on the day also get um, uh, written feedback. Normally on a face-to-face -face course, this is um, handed into the candidate, this is given to the candidate, but on a fully online CELTA course, this is obviously sent to the candidate. Um, and the written feedback would include things such as uh, strengths in planning and strengths in teaching and areas to work on in both um, planning and teaching and also an overall summary of how successful um, the lesson was that is to say uh, whether it was a stronger or a weaker lesson and um, uh, things like that and also some more detailed comments possibly on the stages techniques and some suggestions from the tutor um, and so on um, and and this is this um, valuable piece of paper which the candidates um, take home and read um, and then work from there to um, improve. Um, and um, on a fully online um, CELTA course there's been this one edition which uh, um, I, I've discovered from a lot of centres I've spoken to and, and that's a comment on what can be changed or what would be different in a face-to-face -face lesson. Um, so say uh, monitoring, which I mentioned earlier, um, is a very important technique uh, on, um, on CELTA and in teaching in general. So when we give our students a task, a simple 
gap fill task. We want to see how they are performing and we want to see whether they are making mistakes or not. So um, in a face to face classroom, we would be moving around, looking into their papers, um, hopefully unobtrusively. And we would see what needs more attention. Um, but on a, on a fully online CELTA course, um, obviously, we cannot do that. Um, so a tutor would make a note, a tutor would point out that uh, this uh, this is how uh, monitoring could be happening um, in a face-to-face -face classroom. Um, and and this, this will definitely be mentioned in, in um, oral feedback and, and will be written um, in um, written feedback. And, and, and so um, this is followed by assisted lesson planning, uh, which is when the candidates get uh, support in terms of um, how uh, and what, what they should be doing um, in the teaching uh, practice that follows. Um, and, and depending on the model of the course, the time in the course and the candidate's performance, this can be done uh, in a group. So the tutor working with all six candidates and all of the candidates making suggestions um, to the person who's planning their lesson in terms of how they can do things. Um, this can be done in smaller groups. Um, so remember, because we have three people teaching on one day, sometimes um, trainers choose to work with those three candidates um, uh, who are teaching um, on the day that follows on the next day. Um, and uh, they discuss things with those candidates. And the other three candidates can be working on their written assignments, planning their own lessons, or again, participating and giving ideas. Um, and, and sometimes um, tutors might choose to uh, do some individual um, lesson planning with some of the candidates. And, and so different that there are different models available and, and there's a lot of flexibility um, in terms of um, how things can be done here. Um, and in assisted lesson planning, um, candidates will get both um, some written support, um, we call them TP points or teaching practice points, in which we write our suggestions. And then we also discuss, we want to find out what the candidates think uh, they will be doing and how they will be doing. And we prompt them uh, to think in the right direction. Um, and a lot of the centers are also using this time for rehearsal, especially if they choose to do um, assisted lesson planning in a mini group of three or individually, the other candidates who are not participating in the actual discussion and the actual assisted lesson planning can set up some time for rehearsal. So say um, a candidate can choose their study buddy, they can get together uh, in a Zoom room and the person teaching um, on the next day can try out different things, can, for instance, practice giving instructions and the, the, the study buddy uh, would uh, say how instructions worked or would try and do this thing. And, and um, a lot of the candidates have reported that this rehearsal time is actually very, very helpful. Um, and this is what they value uh, a lot because once they've tried something, especially if it's a complex task, once they've tried setting it up with their study buddy, um, they perform better in the actual um, teacher practice. Um, and so, um, a lot, of th um, a lot of the things to take into account. And uh, we know that, uh, we all know that teaching online is uh, more difficult, more uh, demanding uh, than teaching face-to-face. -face. Uh, and there's been some research done into this, which says that um, we have to be more careful, a lot more careful um, uh, when teaching online because uh, it's very easy to appear unfriendly um, um, Research shows, research says that uh, the delays of 1.2 seconds uh, makes a person look uh, twice as unfriendly as they are. Um, so um, a lot of the things um, would be very important here. And it's also exhausting, it's just really exhausting. So um, in the evening when we have two input sessions, um, it's the trainer doing quite a lot. It's the trainer prompting the candidates, giving some information, and the candidates d discussing uh, things um, in smaller breakout rooms. Um, and, and so um, that's the typical day, the typical CELTA day, and how things could work uh, in an online environment. Um, and, and lots of other questions pop up uh, when I speak to the candidates. Um, for instance, um, we understand that on a fully online CELTA course, everything is done uh, using a computer. And, and so um, 
um, a typical question is, will there be any paperwork and how uh, do I deal with this paperwork um, in this online environment? And so the, um, the, the, the things the candidates absolutely have to submit is the four written assignments. Um, of course, they don't submit all four written assignments at once. They're spread um, over the whole course. Um, and also some paperwork for each of the lessons the candidates teach. So like a formal lesson plan, their materials, analysis of the language they will be teaching, um, possibly some other things, a self-evaluation after the candidates have taught. And so um, a lot of the things uh, to be done um, on computer. Uh, and um, there are different models available for this. And so... Um, centers can choose, centers have options um, to choose from. So for instance, um, on the slide, you can see a screenshot of a simple Google Drive. And this is like a Google Drive uh, folder I've created for one of my candidates where uh, she has eight um, folders for the eight teaching practice slots. So she has to teach eight lessons. So eight folders there, and she uploads all of her paperwork um, into um, the folder. Um, before she teaches. And there are four folders for the written assignments where the candidate also uploads their um, document. And of course, um, if the candidates are not familiar with the um, online, with the um, software the center will be using, um, the center uh, would should give the candidate some support um, in terms of how um, to use uh, this software and definitely inform the candidate in advance so that they can set up a Google Drive um, because this is additional stress and this is some additional work for the candidates, um, which is um, which makes it slightly more difficult. But the beauty of it is that um, along with learning how to teach, the candidates actually learn a lot of other practical things. For example, how to use Zoom, and how to use Google Drive and how to use all of the features. Because um, in a lot of cases, we use those things, but we use a limited number of the features. Um, available there. Um, so using a Google Drive or alternatively, centers can, um, can, can use the Cambridge platform, which um, I said um, can be used for input. And, and on the blended courses, um, candidates have to submit all of their paperwork uh, through this platform. So when we go into the classroom and observe uh, their lessons, we go onto this platform and we download all the paperwork from um, from this platform. Um, and so the, those those are the options available. And of course, candidates also use um, emails to communicate um, with each other and with their students and to share uh, the materials with them. Uh, and all of those things will be set up and will be uh, thought about by the centre um, so that the candidates uh, do not have to think about those little things and, and have to follow the instructions uh, given by the center. Um, a very common question, which I get from almost every candidate, uh, what if technology fails? Um, and what if um, I'm teaching and then suddenly uh, I lose the internet or uh, there's no electricity or simply Zoom won't work uh, or breakout rooms won't work? And, and um, there's always your tutor there um, and it will definitely depend on the center and on the tutor, but in a lot of cases, the trainer will step in and, and um, try and help with technology uh, if the trainer can do that, or if not, uh, the, uh, the trainer uh, will step in and, and probably uh, continue um, with a little bit of teaching while the candidate is trying to fix that. Um, there will be somebody at the center um, who can help fix problems. Uh, normally on face-to-face -face courses, uh, there are IT specialists who help with printers because we all know we always have a problem with the printer um, and um, probably some other people. So uh, candidates will have someone um, to, uh, um, to rely on if technology uh, fails. Um, worst case scenario, teaching practice could be uh, rescheduled uh, because um, be, uh, be, because it's impossible to uh, teach. And um, the way those fully online courses are planned, and and those are advice that, that that's the advice from Cambridge is that we have to have some little days planned for those emergency cases. Um, so um, those are the things and, and there's different scenarios um, um, 
possible. Um, and we want to make sure the candidates are not stressing about that because there's already a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. um, another common question, and it's almost my final question um, I want to deal with is, uh, will I learn how to teach um, in a face-to-face -face classroom when doing a fully online uh, CELTA course? Um, and the answer is, um, of course, um, yes, uh, definitely, because all of the principles um, are, um, of the uh, communicative methodology which we teach in CELTA are applicable to both a face-to-face -face classroom and, and an online classroom. Um, and, and some people will say that it's very difficult to talk about a face-to-face -face classroom uh, when, when you're actually just doing it online and you've not tried monitoring. Yes, that's true, that's fair, uh, but um, it's possible it's possible to talk about how those things are done and um, a lot of the candidates have some experience uh, some teaching experience um, and and they know how things uh, could work um, in a face <clears throat> in a face-to-face -face classroom um, right and what will be written on my uh, certificate is another common question and um, as of now um, I think what's happening is there is no difference in the certificates on the face-to-face -face blended online full-time part-time uh, courses. So um, whatever course you're taking, uh, you're getting a standard Cambridge um, certificate. Um, and um, I think that's my final question I wanted to deal with. Uh, Yes, I, I will be happy to answer um, any questions um, later on um, at the end when we have the Q&A panel. And uh, I think now is the time I will be uh, handing over to um, Hisham. And thank you very much um, for this opportunity to speak to you. Well, thank you very much, Kate. Um, I was trying my best to be on time because you just mentioned that uh, if um, uh, statistically 2.5 minutes late means <laughs> It gives an indication that you're not very friendly. So <laughs> I was trying my best to be there right when you finish. So uh, thank you very much for the um, insightful presentation. Uh, I think uh, I share many of the comments that were made uh, while you're presenting, uh, that this was very thorough, very complete, um, gives uh, a lot of information and a lot of details, uh, which is great. So uh, thank you very much for that. And please stay tuned because um, in about half an hour, we'll be um, um, uh, reconnecting again with the um, with the panel. Um, now, I think we've got plenty of information now in our hands. We've got information uh, related to the content of CELTA, uh, the overview of CELTA, and um, the types of CELTA, um, thanks to the presentations of um, um, Tim and Kate. Uh, now, actually, it's... Um, um, it's very important, really, to see the views of the various people that are the, that are either taking CELTA or planning on taking CELTA. Um, and this is why I'm very honored and delighted to be joined by uh, Liz uh, Eikenat. And apologies if I didn't pronounce the name correct. Um, uh, Liz is an online uh, CELTA course director uh, at the International Training Institute in Istanbul, uh, Turkey. Um, now, Liz was kind enough really to share as well some uh, of uh, the perspectives and the insights and testimonies from uh, various uh, trainees. Um, so before we go, uh, before we hear from Liz, um, uh, let me share with you some of the um, recorded testimonies uh, that uh, Liz kindly provided. Uh, so there are two videos. Uh, I'm playing them one uh, after, uh, I'm playing one now and I'll play the other um, after Liz uh, finishes. So uh, please stay tuned and please make sure that um, you turn on the, um, uh, the audio um, on your computer so you can hear the video. Here it comes. much be to remember what I started out with, 
to be more um, idealistic, to not lose that idealistic self. Um, this course has been very, it's been long, but I think it was very good because it was all about applying, applying, applying. And I think that was very, very, very helpful. And um, I think that this was much more effective uh, than maybe other courses, I'm not sure. Because it was all about your own classroom, your own environment, your own students that you already know. So uh, it's just been a huge self-reflection for me. Big feedback, big input to me as a teacher. And it's gonna it's gonna give me a sense of confidence, a good sense of confidence for the coming years. Okay, where do I begin with Stealthy? First of all, it's completely different from Stealthy. Um, it's an online training and it's my first one, it was my first online training. Uh, so it was a little, the process was a little bit more uh, relaxed and calm compared, compared to the Stealthy experience, at, at least from my point of view. Um, I've really had a chance to um, learn the proper terminology, the names, the applications that I've already been using in the classroom and classify them, categorize them and learn them in depth. Um, and I've learned a lot of theoretical um, information that I can use and practice in the classroom. And I've learned that um, I shouldn't give up because not always the theory and the practice um, goes hand in hand in real life. So that was uh, an eye-opener for me. Um, I learned how to make my lessons more student-centered throughout the uh, applications and the constant reflection process. And with the trainer coming uh, to my classroom, in my class, seeing me in my own environment in, at school, and observing me in that environment was really, really the most beneficial thing for me. Um, because um, it was it was like a case study and I could uh, go through the lesson with the trainer and then get some feedback and then um, reflect on my teaching process, uh, observe my learners' needs. I have um, special needs students in my classroom, uh, students with autism, students with Asperger's syndrome, uh, students with ADHD and it's a mixed age group. Uh, in my class, so it's uh, a little bit different than the traditional teaching environment in the country where I live in. Uh, so that those feedback sessions with the trainer uh, helped a lot with that process. Me dealing with the classroom environment and uh, me progressing towards uh, being a better teacher. And with the um, reports and lesson plans that I've written and the feedback that I got for those uh, plans really helped me to um, see and observe myself as a teacher and help me to grow as a teacher. That's my experience with self -being. Well, at first I had some second chance about being myself -y. I thought, okay, I've got my self-talk. Is it really different from self-talk? Will it add something to my teaching? Then, yes, it did. Actually, it changed everything. It was so fulfilling and a uh, fruitful experience. I learned a lot. Uh, I had a very good tutor. She was always there for me. She provided me uh, with support. With She was very inspiring, helping, and motivating. Uh, and the one more thing is that she used to come to my own classroom. She would observe me there, and this is something that is really different from CELTA. You've got your own environment, your own students, so everything is really different, guys. If you've got some doubts, if you don't know, uh, okay, you've got CELTA, I don't know, Delta maybe, but you have some doubts about taking part in CELTA, we do it. Because teaching adults is really different from uh, teaching young learners. So you need to be expert in this and selfie makes you expert.
I'm Liz at ITI in Istanbul. And our experience was very similar to Kate's, except that we were we were just starting a full time course. Uh, people had flown into the country to start the full time face to face course, and we went into lockdown. And not only were we in lockdown, but they were unable to get flights home. And we had a, a clear commitment to our trainees on the course to run it. So we adapted our course. It was originally going to be a four week course, but we decided to adapt it to five weeks to make sure that people had the time. And we moved all of our input sessions online using Zoom and then spent the time during that using Zoom for their input, but also to prepare our trainees to use Zoom before we started the teaching practice. The teaching practice we then trained our students. So we took a lot of time to train the tutors, to train the students and to train the CELTA teachers. And we had same hiccups as everybody has, sound problems, all sorts of things. But the upshot of it was that we found when we were actually starting the teaching practice, that the what we were seeing in the classroom, in online classroom, was very similar to what we were seeing in a face-to-face -face classroom, perhaps without the movement. Um, the trainees on the course were learning the skills that they're supposed to be learning on a face-to-face -face CELTA. They were learning how to give clear instructions. In fact, that was one of the things they learned most quickly. They learned how to operate the platform. They learned how to manage a classroom in an online situation, moving students into groups and pairs, thinking about how to check understanding, how to present practice skills, how to present language. And as Kate said already, every single lesson we made a point of coming back and reflecting on what was, how that would work in a classroom, what you would do different, whether the seating would work, whether the instructions would have worked, and all those issues that were important. What we also found, which was very pleasing because we brought in our students from our normal face-to-face -face teaching practice. They, like us, were all at home. They had time on their hands. We invited them to come and join our teaching practice groups. Um, and it was quite entertaining to begin with. Some of them didn't know how to sit. Some of them sat about a mile away from their computer. Um, because they thought they were watching TV. So we had to bring in all the skills of arranging how they should be sitting. Do they need pens? Do they need pencils? We had um, grandchildren running in to sort out people's technical problems. It was a lot of fun. But what we found most pleasingly was that the students were learning. As we went through the courses, as we went through the normal process of teaching practice, our students were making progress in moving from quite a lot of Turkish, especially with the low level students as they didn't know how to move around the platform into using English in pair work, in group works, studying, thinking about the language that they were using. We saw them reflecting all the skills that we would normally expect um, in the classroom. Um, People have been asking, and I've seen this now, we then had the full course, we ran it for five weeks and it was successful. We're now on to our second batch. Um, and this time we have changed the schedule. We got used to the idea that sitting for the tutors, sitting for trainees, is it hurts your back. You need time for a break. So again, we've extended the program and a lot of centers, we've been talking to tutors from around the world, are doing the same thing, building in more breaks. So now our standard full-time course is five weeks for the moment until we get back to school, which means that we can build in more breaks. We can build in a day when people have, so we ha we're doing Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday. So they have a break on Wednesday for lesson planning to step away from the computer um, and to take breaks. And we're, we're spacing out the input. So we either have early starts, early starts and early finish or a late start and a late finish. Um, 
in terms of whether to do the full-time course or the blended with Moodle, we've said the same as we would say for all courses. The full-time course means people have to be available full-time, as you would if you were coming to a face-to-face -face course. So you can't do that four- or five-week course, even if you're working online, if you're also working at the same time. You need the time to study. You need the time to write lesson plans. You need the time to get ready uh, for your class and for, to do your assignments. We're using the Moodle platform for the blended course as we always have. We're doing it over an extended period, 10 weeks, and doing um, teaching practice a couple of days a week over a five-week block in that. Um, so those are the two things. Now, in terms of what the student, what the teachers get in the classroom environment, Kate talked about this a lot, but it, it was very important for us to make sure that teachers still get some um, sense of a full-time classroom, so of a fully face-to-face -face classroom. So alongside the observations that we normally do, they have four video observations, which in, in the past it was three, but we put in an extra one, four video observations of practicing experienced teachers in the classroom. So they actually get to see that side of teaching. And we do live observations of the tutors doing um, the online classes at the beginning. So they get to see us with the platform. Um, and as Kate said, we've also got this unassessed teaching practice um, where you get to teach the students yourselves um, using the platform and trying things out. In addition to that, with the training on Zoom, we've set up some micro teaching. So teaching practice, so the trainees are divided into small groups where they go away and they try out the functionality of the platform, they try out ideas, and they take turns to teach each other something, maybe a reading passage for 15 minutes, maybe a grammar point, maybe some vocabulary, and then they come back to the main group and give feedback on how that, that happens. As with many centers, we have talked to trainers around the world and we, we tried out different platforms for this. We tried with Adobe, we tried, we, we had all sorts of tests, but we decided as with many centers to go with Zoom because you get this more personal um, connection with them. You can see the students, you can see them working, you can see their faces, you can see that if they are paying attention, we, that you can see what's going on with them. And that really helps reflect the online situation. We've kept the class sizes smaller. Um, at our center, our face-to-face -face courses are incredibly popular and we normally get 20 plus students at the beginning of courses. We thought that was too many for people to have to cope with on an online platform. So we've kept the number down, as Kate was saying, to about eight or 10. And as Kate said, the tutor and the observers um, turn their cameras off so that they are not intrusive. And we have found that that works very well. Um, with a platform like Zoom, we, for the actual practical side of it, we hand over the host control to the person who is teaching and the person who is, uh, the, the, the observers turn their cameras off and we are as, or assigned as what are called co-hosts, which means that we can follow the teacher around the platform and see what's going on in the breakout rooms, in the group work and so on. What we've also tried to build into this course is to reflect classroom management in terms of a classroom situation. Um, we found that one of the things that was happening was that with the instructions, because of being on a platform, the teachers were giving instructions that were related to technology, um, such as you need to click on the invitation to join a breakout room. And we found that that wasn't really preparing them to go into a face-to-face -face classroom. So we thought about how we could do this. And we found that with 
um, good preparation of the students in learning how to use the platform, that the language that they were using with the students in on Zoom started to reflect the language that they would be using in the classroom. And the more confident they became, which really took two or three lessons, I think, and, and they're doing eight in total, um, meant that they were able to bring in other techniques that they use in the full-time classroom, um, including bringing in some movement sometimes, getting the students out of their chairs, using visuals, using realia. The thing that we found was the most effective was the way um, teachers were adjusting their lesson plans. Uh, all teachers on any course are asked to reflect on um, their teaching and their planning from lesson to lesson. But we found that with Zoom, the trainees were really working hard to adjust um, address any problems that they'd had in previous lessons. And so they were refining their materials, refining their lesson plans much faster than we see in a face-to-face -face environment um, because they recognize the need for that. Um, and so the results that we got from our first course were very encouraging. The feedback that we got from our course courses was that they felt that they were prepared for um, teaching in the classroom, and they could see how it would transfer over. Um, I don't really have much more to add to this. This is from a very personal perspective, but I believe we have some videos of some of our trainees coming up um, who would perhaps give you their perspective on doing this. And then later on, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank, Thank you very, very much, Liz, much for, the, um, for, sharing. Uh, for, the, for sharing your experience with us. Uh, that's very much appreciated. Very insightful, very useful to all teachers. Thank you very much. Um, like you said, uh, I think it's worth uh, mentioning that um, uh, we've got uh, multiple videos uh, from various centers. So we're trying to capture all the experiences um, uh, across the region, really. Uh, so, um, uh, I leave you with uh, another uh, video. Um, uh, this uh, features um, uh, trainer, uh, trainees from Lizard Center. Um, it's a few minutes long, so I'll leave you to, uh, to it. Uh, and I'll be back shortly afterwards. Hey, I'm Imane al -Aufi. I did my Cambridge CELTA course at the National University, which is located in Muscat, from February to April 2020. I started my course as a face-to-face -face course. However, due to the COVID-19, uh, we moved to a fully online course. But I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because it uh, affords me a new experience day by day. And my tutors were very incredible. I was able to improve my skills in the method of teaching English day by day as well. So I recommend my friends to take the CELTA course at the National University in Muscat. Thank you. Hi, my name is Anna. I'm Polish, but I've been living in Turkey for 12 years. Uh, I'm currently taking my CELTA course at ITI Istanbul and I was supposed to go there uh, to have my teaching practice. Uh, however, because of the current situation, because of COVID-19, we are all stuck at home and uh, going to Istanbul became simply impossible. Uh, still, we managed to complete our two-week um, teaching practice online uh, on Zoom and uh, with the support of the tutors, both students and teachers, uh, managed to learn how to use Zoom effectively pretty fast. So the whole online teaching practice has definitely taught us a lot. Uh, first of all, we had a chance to uh, practice various methods that can be used in the normal traditional classroom, like uh, elicitation, drilling, CCQs, and in fact, uh, almost everything that we discussed uh, during the course uh, was practiced. Another big advantage is the fact that you are uh, at home, uh, in your living room, uh, on your couch with the lesson plan in your hand. So you definitely feel uh, more confident and uh, less stressed than in front of the class. 
uh, the problems that we had to face were a little bit different, a little bit more Zoom related, but still we uh, learned how to deal with the problems, how to uh, stay calm and how to modify our lesson plan if necessary. And uh, there aren't many uh, disadvantages that, that I can think of. Uh, at the very beginning, everyone was stressed about the whole uh, Zoom situation, about how it is going to work out. Uh, but there are just a few things that you really need to uh, learn and use uh, to teach effectively. Uh, another uh, disadvantage is the fact that you have to stay still and sit uh, in front of your camera and for me as an energetic person it was quite hard because I like to move and I like to have my students move around uh, but still uh, you can do it uh, through the breakout rooms and you can do it on Zoom uh, virtually. Hello, my name is Shamil Nakyanja and I am one of the trainees um, who took the ITI CELTA online teaching practices. Um, these online teaching practices were really hard for me at first because it was my first time to teach online. But after a very short while, I got used to them because they were so straightforward and very easy to, to work through. Um, I I really enjoyed these teaching practices and I believe that our students do enjoy it because we could tell from their participation. Um, and um, these online teaching practices actually equipped me with the skills and knowledge uh, for teaching online because I had never taught online before and uh, this was a great opportunity for me to learn and, and get confident teaching online. Um, the other thing is that um, I highly believe that these teaching, this online teaching practices also prepared me for face-to-face -face teaching because uh, during these practices um, I was able to practice both, uh, I was able to practice teaching both uh, productive skills and receptive skills, drama and lexis and um, uh, uh, our tutors would observe us during the practices and after every uh, practice they would give us feedback, constructive feedback on uh, what we should do, what, on where we should improve and what we did well and all this feedback was really helpful to in a way that we, we carried it on into the next lesson. Um, the other thing is that uh, during these practices, um, students were able to work individually and in groups and uh, we could do this uh, for group uh, work, we could do this uh, using uh, breakout rooms and uh, I was able to practice monitoring and giving feedback. Um, the other thing is that um, during the practices, um, we would uh, write, we were able to write, to use the annotation tool to write um, anything, just like it would be in a in a classroom, in a face-to-face -face classroom where you would have a whiteboard to write on. So even in these um, te online teaching practices, we had uh, the opportunity to write. Uh, we could write in the chats, we could also write on a whiteboard, we could use the annotation tool to the text um, option to write there's something on the screen and of course we would share the screen we would um, we would share the screen uh, and uh, we prepared slides uh, which we would share with the students we were able to do the listenings and all the other skills like i said before um, these lessons the online teaching practice lessons were 45 minutes and this is a typical uh, duration for face-to-face -face lessons so I believe that it also helped me um, practice time management just like it would be in a face-to-face -face, uh, classroom lesson. Um, yes, I believe that's all I had to say about, about this. Thank you so much. Perfect. Uh, thank you guys uh, very much uh, for taking part um, um, uh, in these videos. Uh, so these videos featured featured um, 
uh, various um, trainees uh, from um, um, uh, IH Esmir, IH Istanbul, and the National University uh, in Oman. Uh, so hopefully this uh, gives um, um, all, all the people that are listening to us uh, today um, some insights of the experience um, that uh, CELTA Online offers. Uh, now, um, I'm, I'm moving to the final part um, of the presentation, uh, which is really um, the most interactive part. Um, uh, in this part, um, we are inviting all the speakers, uh, and uh, I'm also delighted to um, um, to um, uh, have also Mr. Miles uh, Terithawai, uh, Silta main course tutor uh, at Polyglot Institute IH Muscat. Um, he will be joining us uh, in this webinar, in this uh, panel discussion. Uh, there were many questions uh, during the presentations, and uh, we limited uh, the um, uh, the opportunity to respond to these questions uh, to the very end. So now we still have around uh, 20 minutes uh, or so, and hopefully we will be responding to all these uh, questions or most of them. Uh, may I invite all the speakers really to turn on their cameras so we can uh, have um, an interactive um, discussion um, and also share with you um, some of the questions that we received. Um, um, so uh, thank you really for the insightful presentations that you shared with us today. It was really, really interesting to see the responses. Uh, we've got, um, I've got a list of um, of uh, around five, six questions to each one. So uh, I'll make the questions uh, quite uh, straightforward and um, uh, direct. Uh, allow me to start with uh, Tim. Uh, so Tim, there, were, there was a very basic question uh, to explain um, uh, the difference between Celta and Delta. Um, so um, if you would like to shed some light on the differences in terms of the duration and um, the content. Yes, certainly. Uh, it's good to see lots of questions from everybody. So I hope we can get through most of them. Um, CELTA is the initial teaching qualification. So it's usually taken by people at the beginning of their teaching career or when they need to do some uh, relatively um, initial training. DELTA is uh, at a higher level. It's um, equivalent to the beginning of a master's course. And it's usually for teachers with more experience. So most teachers would have well, a minimum of two years teaching experience before they take a, a Delta, often more than that. So it goes into a lot more detail on the UK qualifications framework. Um, CELTA is at level five, which is similar to a kind of undergraduate uh, degree level. And DELTA is at level seven, which is equivalent to the first year of a master's course. Yeah. And both of them, uh, Tim, are OFQA regulated and um, they uh, carry credits, uh, official credits, because one of the questions that was asked as well here, uh, can they basically move um, or use these qualifications to uh, get a full master's? There, yes, there are some courses which offer credit for um, Delta, uh, mainly in UK universities, but also a few in other places. Um, it varies from one university to another, so you need to research that in more detail. Yeah. Um, on the same point as we are talking about this, uh, another question about a TKT and the difference between TKT and CELTA. TKT is a very different thing in that uh, CELTA, DELTA, CELTP, CELTA, the other things we've been talking about today are all courses leading to a qualification which involve focus on real classroom teaching. TKT is a teaching knowledge test, it is a test, so you can prepare for TKT any way that you like, you can prepare on your own, you can take a course, and then it's a written test. Um, so it's a short written test for each of the TKT modules. It doesn't involve practical classroom teaching. So it's very different in that way, but it's very much um, more accessible. So whereas these courses involve a big commitment of time or work, um, it is much more um, accessible really to the majority of people. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, now, uh, moving on uh, on the same theme, but uh, slightly more focused on the theme of this presentation. Um, so one of the questions was talking about CELT-P and CELT-S being offered 100% online as well. Yeah, the CELT-P, CELT-S, yeah, and most of the course is online anyway. Um, so they can generally be taken online. The only thing that we usually insist on having face-to-face -face is the final assessed teaching practice. And in most cases, that can be done online um, in the current situation. Yeah, one more question on the same theme. Can somebody take Delta without taking CELTA? 
out taking a selfie. Uh, yes, they can. In fact, I did. I took my diploma. I never took a selfie myself. I have to admit. Okay. <laughs> um, so yes, they can take additional qualifications as long as they meet the entry requirements for Delta. Then yes, they can. Perfect. Um, uh, I'll move to Miles, uh, and thanks, uh, Miles, for joining us today. I mean, it's really a pleasure to have as many people from different parts of the world as um, as uh, possible. So you're joining us today from uh, Muscat, uh, yes, uh, and, yeah. and and you're running this course. I think um, you, you you started running this course a few days back. Uh, so would you be able to share um, some of your insights uh, as well with us? Okay. I, I, I... About um, two or three weeks ago, um, or may, three or four weeks ago, we had to. We were running a part-time shelter, um, and that had to stop. Um, and we had to take three of our teaching practices online. Um, so that was interesting. It was very stressful at the beginning. Um, and so we got the advice from Cambridge that it would be allowed to take the teaching practice online. But uh, so, so we had to speak to the students first or the trainees first to see whether they wanted to um, wait and do their teaching practice later or um, uh, go for the online option. And they went for the latter. Um, and it was amazing. Uh, most of them were, or I'd say all of them were very positive about the uh, moving online. Um, so um, initially, we had an informal discussion on Zoom with them for the first time. Um, and we had two or three sessions before we even started getting back online. Um, and the trainees themselves were giving uh, workshops. There was one trainee who, who went, went out and learned a lot about Zoom. She sent notes and, um, and of course, it became very productive. Um, and then, um, so, so they had some practice in, in using the tools um we didn't really have time because we were mid course to give them a, another unassessed teaching practice because we were under time pressure as well uh to finish the course um so yeah i i, I can say overall it went well and we the course was also assessed and moderated online um and luckily we had no recommendations from the assessor so i was pretty happy about that um, the, assess the assessor conducted the moderation over two days, um, so that was useful um, and less stressful um, for the trainees because on the first day, the assessor spoke to the trainees by themselves like they usually do. Um, and I think it worked out well. Uh, so, so that was the course that we just finished, and I, um, I've just started um, the new CELTA online using Cambridge's uh, Moodle. We started yesterday, and we did our orientation on Sunday. So, um, so, so that was. Um, yeah, it was, it's been very stressful getting things up and running. Um, and I, I prefer myself the 12 week program or 18 week program. Um, so, um, but the important thing is when you interview the students and Cambridge is making this a requirement at the, if I'm right, Tim, is that the trainees need to be informed of the differences between face-to-face -face and online teaching. Um, and I believe uh, that is the way forward. Um, yeah, yeah. As, uh, as Liz was saying, that we encourage centres to always um, 
to always talk uh, with their trainees about how they would do things differently if it was in a face-to-face -face classroom to make sure that they're fully aware of uh, any different approaches that would be needed in the in the face-to-face -face environment yeah yeah and i think that's a crucial point um i think that's really really important because a lot of the questions that basically we got out there and a lot of the inquiries that we receive on a daily basis is that basically are we, I mean, are we really talking about the same CELTA here? Are we talking about the same content, the same material, the same delivery, and most importantly, the same quality assurance? So yeah. if we can shed some light on these two points, really, I think that's really critical. Yeah, um, so, so, yeah just say a couple of things about that. Um, for, for one thing, um, there are some of the questions I saw earlier as well about um, how does the course vary from one centre to another? Um, from Cambridge, we provide the syllabus, we provide the, um, the moderation of the course, but centres develop their own actual course that they deliver. So there is some var variation between one course and another, but they all reach the same standard. They all meet the same requirements. Um, in this case, uh, it's the candidates will get the same certificate at the end of the course. There's no different certificate for the online only version. Um, so, the, so, sorry, so the certificate doesn't mention that it's online, does it? No, 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 it's exactly the same certificate uh, regardless. Um, and I've kind of forgotten what I was going to say now. What was the? Sorry. Could you remind me what was the question you were asking? The content. Um, so the content it varies from one centre to another. <clears throat> the content can vary slightly the way it's delivered, but the standard is the same. The course uh, is, is essentially the same thing, and the certificate is the same. Um, yeah. And the yeah the fact that it's delivered purely online shouldn't have any impact at all on that. Uh, it's uh, as I say, centres are very much. Um, encouraged to relate what they're doing in online teaching. I would say it, it develops very much the same skills. There are some slight differences, of course, um, and we encourage centres as well, and some centres are doing this, um, to offer a kind of, when they're in a position to do so, to offer a face-to-face -face lesson to their candidates as well um, after the course. So that wouldn't be part of the regular course, but as, as a way of adapting to teaching in a normal face-to-face -face classroom later. So that, you know, there's various ways that people can help with that, but um, yeah, I don't think there's a, a huge difference. Well, thanks, Tim. Uh, Liz, um, would you agree that basically, um, you know, I think the, the the most important element here in the in the content is um, the the localization or the 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 importance of um, um, responding to the local, regional, cultural aspects um, of the uh, of the course. So, do you think that basically the online course has taken this out? Uh, I no. I saw as well earlier. No. Um, I mean, we, we went through the criteria very, very carefully um, when we talked about doing this. Can you still hear me? I've got all sorts of yep. panic buttons appearing at the top of my screen. Um, and I'm not sure whether to panic. Um, they, we, we went through the criteria very carefully and, and Tim will know that we wrote to them and we went through and we thought the only thing that we couldn't cover, which is one of the criteria about arranging the classroom according to safety regulations and things like that in the country. And so we can't do that. We can't ensure that the, the students in their homes are following any particular safety re regulations. But we have seen the trainees take on that responsibility to, as I said, to get the students. Yeah, as I said, we had some students who thought that they were watching TV and would sit like half a mile away from the controls. And they they got them. It was it was their guidance that got them into the position to work together. They were giving the instructions. And I think with any cell tech, with any course at all, I remember when I did my initial training course, when you're in a classroom environment, your first lessons on the CELTA, you stand up, you feel very nervous. I remember trying to write something on the whiteboard and shaking so much that I couldn't write in a in a straight line. It's vertically down the board. Um, and when I started my first teaching job after I'd completed my course, I had the same nerves about standing in front of a student, um, a group of students that I didn't know. And I think that's the same with this. They get more relaxed. They're a little bit nervous on the first day on Zoom. They get used to it. When they go into a classroom environment, if they don't have that experience before, you will naturally have the same nerves. But I don't think they're much different. Maybe tiny little things about being able to write physically on a whiteboard. That could be something 
But what they have learned from this course is how to present materials. They've, they've learned how to work with the local students. They still find out about who the students are. There are our local students here in Istanbul. They found out what their interests are. They found out what their needs are. They found out who works to work well together, which groupings work well together, exactly the, as they would on an online course. So, um, yes, it's different. As Anna said, she likes standing up and moving around. I like standing up and moving around. I'm twitching around in my chair here. Um, but we have found ways that, 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 that they've got students to do that anyway. Yeah. So, and, and, and we are living anyway certain circumstances that basically we have to uh, to be adaptive to. So, very great insight, uh, Kate. Um, over to yeah. you. Um, uh, I, I mean, obviously, most of the questions were very similar, and most of the questions yeah. basically were asked there were very, very similar, uh, mainly focused around um, you know, the delivery of the course and um, uh, the variation of the course. Uh, there were a couple of questions related to the fees, which I will refer to Tim back in a, in a few minutes. Um, but um, but over to you, Kate. Um, I mean, would you um, share? Would you basically agree that um, that um, um, perhaps in these circumstances, this is the only this is the best option we have in our hands at the moment? Uh, One hundred percent online shelter. Um, yes, definitely. And and personally, I'm not a big fan of online learning. I find it difficult. Um, and I, I was a bit reluctant when we had to start doing that. And we obviously had to speak to our candidates as well. And some of them were reluctant as well. Uh, but, but the best thing about it is that um, in, in the modern world, quite a lot of our candidates are already teaching online and they come to those courses with some experience. Um, and, and when we just started, we were learning quite a lot of things from them as well, because uh, everybody has their own little tricks um, they do um, in the classroom. Uh, but yes, um, if the candidates do this uh, fully online CELTA, they basically they get the uh, basics of the methodology um, and they learn how to do things. Um, but both in a face-to-face -face classroom and in an online classroom. Though in a face-to-face -face classroom, they would still need to um, practice um, doing that. They would still need to try try that out. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see that quite a lot of our candidates are moving because we had enrollment for the summer for, for the June and July courses. And quite a lot of our candidates are moving to the online courses. And, and that's good. That's good to know. Perfect. Thank you, Kate. Uh, I mean, it's um, it's um, um, it's a pity that we only have a few minutes left uh, in this webinar. So I want to make um, uh, the most of these few minutes left to answer specific questions uh, related to the logistics and the structure of the course. So, um, Tim, uh, some of the questions we're asking about where can they take uh, CELTA, 100% um, uh, online CELTA in various countries. I have a list that's coming up. Um, one of the slides indicated a list in all the countries, but also there were questions related to the fees, how much the, um, uh, the, uh, these courses cost, and also if um, exactly as um, uh, the same way that the content of the course may vary, um, does the cost vary as well? And does Cambridge have any say in that at all? Uh, also, one of the questions that are feeding into the same thing is, um, is Cambridge ever going to deliver these courses directly? Or is it always delivered through the centres? Uh, yes, a few things to cover there. So the, <clears throat> the course, of course, is always delivered through our centres. So we don't deliver it directly ourselves from Cambridge. And there's no, no intention to change that, certainly. Um, there are, as I mentioned, I think earlier, there are centres across the world where CELTA is run. Many of those have switched to delivering online CELTA at the moment. Some can't for various reasons, um, but many of them have done. And there, are, as you say, you'll show a list of uh, ones in this region that are doing it. Um, the fees for CELTA, we don't set the fees either in Cambridge. So the fees are worked out by um, each centre. And so there is quite a lot of variety. Roughly speaking, the fees can vary anywhere between about a thousand pounds per course to sixteen hundred pounds per course. But um, yeah, it's in a very wide range. It depends mostly on the the costs of running a course in that uh, location. Um, and um, there's one other thing I was going to mention was the application procedure. Uh, so a few questions I noticed in the chat box about the application procedure. 
Um, and Liz, Kate, Miles could uh, go into more detail, I'm sure, but uh, there is an application procedure. So you need to apply to a center, you find a center that's suitable for you, apply to that center, and then there'll be a, an application task that the um, trainee, potential trainee has to complete. And then there'll be an interview as well to make sure that you're a suitable candidate to go on to the course. Um, and they'll explain then the details about how the course is going to work as well. Perfect. So um, I think um, um, we still have around one minute um, of our time here. Um, so one of the main questions here is where can they apply? Uh, I know you answered that um, uh, briefly, but I'm just putting up a slide here with the centers that already um, um, you know, um, running these courses in various countries. Um, so, um, Tim, you just mentioned that basically uh, the process starts with the candidate applying to these centers directly and they will be able to provide them with all the details, right? Yes, yeah. So the center will be able to, uh, to give all the details about when the courses are running, the fees, uh, how they're operating, yeah. Perfect. Um, now, I think that uh, I only have a um, few seconds left uh, in this uh, presentation, and uh, that only gives me time to mention to all the people that are listening to us today uh, that we will have an email um, following this webinar outlining all the contact details and structures and also including the um, a copy of the uh, certificate to be downloaded. Um, and that, also, that uh, only leaves uh, enough time for us to thank um, the speakers that took part in this webinar today. Uh, Tim Banks, thank you very much for joining us. Um, Kate, thank you very much for taking the time. Um, Liz, uh, it's been uh, great really sharing and listening to your experience in the classroom. Uh, Miles, also, um, we had very limited time at the end, so but I'm sure in the future we'll be able to hear more about uh, your experience in IH Muscat. So it's really gra great to have you all here, and I look forward to uh, catching up and uh, seeing you all in future webinars. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll uh, wish you a um, very happy and uh, um, um, a joyful rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.